All right, welcome in. Uh, Mark Titus here with Jake Marsh, obviously, as you can see, wearing his Vermont hoodie. Uh, we have uh, a little bit of time left in the St. Mary's Grand Canyon game, about seven minutes left. Uh, Grand Canyon is up by 10. We're going to go ahead and keep an eye on it. We're not calling it. Um, I'm not saying this game is over. I'm just saying we can uh, we can put it on the back burner for now because it feels like Grand Canyon has this thing in control. And every time St. Mary's uh, seems like they're chipping away at this thing, uh, I look up and, and the Grand Canyon fans are absolutely losing their mind. Um, so Jake and I are going to uh, talk about all the action today. Uh, and I think we're gonna we should start, Jake, with the uh, upset of the day. This segment is brought to you by Visible. Ever wish you could call a foul on your wireless carrier for their hidden fees? Then it's time to switch to Visible. Switch to Visible, the wireless company with nothing to hide, and get one line wireless with unlimited 5G data powered by Verizon, just twenty five dollars a month every month. Taxes and fees included. One line wireless, twenty five dollars a month. Taxes and fees are included. No hidden fees. No gotchas. Visible is the wireless company with nothing to hide. Unlimited 5G data powered by Verizon. Don't let hidden fees stop you from being a fan of wireless. Switch to Visible and save. Switch now at Visible.com. Rate with service on the Visible plan for additional terms and network management practices. See Visible.com. Uh-oh. Five point Dude, eight. look how look how quick that was. We did this on purpose, right? Because like if we would have... If same Aries wins, they need to thank us. Yeah, if we wouldn't have... If we would have waited till the end of the game... It would have been a blowout. It would have been a blowout, and then we would have been like, why don't we just start the show? Um... All right. Well, now I'm distracted. Now I want to watch the end of this. Uh, All right. We've uh, I've I've learned from Big Cat and PFT doing this on Sunday Night Football. They they do their best to multitask. You're, so we're gonna do our best to multitask. Let's yeah. start with the upset of the day. Uh, brought to you by Visible. Um, I'll let you go first. You're the guest. What to you, Jake? There weren't a ton. We'll say that. Like I I felt like um, you never want to say a, a, a bad day of March Madness beats a. The, beats a, a day without March Madness, you know what I mean? And uh, I don't mean to say that, like, I, I wanted more, but um, if it did feel like yesterday with Kentucky going down, uh, that was, like, a monumental thing because it was not just Kentucky losing. It was like, oh, my God, is this the end of the John Calipari? Or it just felt like, a, it felt like a moment. I don't really know if we got a moment today, but we did have some upsets, and we did have – um, some fun things happen. So what to you is the, was the upset of the day? Yeah, so the upset of the day presented by Visible, it was one that actually destroyed my bracket. It was the Auburn Tigers, the red-hot Auburn Tigers, winning the SEC tournament, uh, losing to Yale. And it looked like they had that game locked up down the stretch, but Yale didn't miss, and Auburn missed a bunch of free throws. They had a great look on that final possession, but, you know, we always we, – we knew – one of those red hot conference tournament champions right. were going to fall and i thought it was going to be either illinois or iowa state but i picked the wrong one and it screwed me but that's why that's why that conversation is so confusing because uh you you ask like so someone asked like if if is winning your conference championship a good thing or a bad thing and the answer is yes because because <laughs> right. if you look at auburn it's like you know maybe it's not the best thing in the world that auburn wins and, uh, you know, it's a really emotional moment for Bruce Pearl. He lost his father. He's, he's really feeling it. Janai Broom is doing uh, in his post game. He's saying we're not going to lose again. There's there's this sense of like accomplishment, which is a great thing. I mean, winning an SEC championship is a is a thing you should celebrate. But you do wonder if like, you know, that was it. And that was like their peak. And they they celebrated not that they celebrated too much, but like the feeling of accomplishment is done. And it's like, was Auburn hungry enough? I don't know. Um but then on the flip side of that, UConn today against Stetson. I mean, it was like <laughs> I get it's a 16 10, seed, right? <laughs> I get it's a 16 seed, but like, oh my god. Like UConn is so dialed in right now. They look like a they look like an NBA team playing yeah. college teams. It's crazy. Um so yeah, I mean, I I probably agree with you. It was Yale over Auburn. Like that was the one that felt like the moment, especially, you know, the uh the Auburn fans yesterday. Um I mean, everybody yesterday was dunking on Kentucky and John Calipari, but I do think Auburn uh, fans specifically felt like they were, were screwed by getting a four seed. Maybe they deserved Kentucky's three seed. There was a lot of chatter from them about that. And then in the end, it kind of doesn't matter because they both blow it. And, uh, yeah, John uh, Pulikaitis for Yale was just bananas. Hit six threes. Um, the end of that game was so – That game felt over multiple times. So favorite crazy. of Auburn. Yeah. Uh, so crazy the way it ended, just like absolute chaos and Katie yeah. Johnson. Something felt poetic about Katie Johnson being the one to have the ball and like double pump at the buzzer. Yeah, <laughs> Brick it. I don't know. It just like when I think of the last few years of Bruce Pearl's run at Auburn and like where things have gone wrong, it's been guard play, and most of the time it's 
it's it's guys like Katie Johnson. Did you so. see uh, <laughs> Coach Pearl's sideline hit about the ejection? Oh yeah, <laughs> I did not see it, but uh, but you saw we what he said. Do you no. hear what he said? No, what he said. I'm pretty sure he said something along the lines of, and I, again, I don't think this is a direct quote, but it's a shame because he played so hard the whole season and for all to come down to this. But then you look at the replay and it's like, it was. Oh, he was saying like they shouldn't have tossed the kid. I think he said he thought it should have been a flagrant it's, one. It's unfair to the kid because <laughs> yeah, something he wound up his line. elbow and drills a guy in the chest. Um, I thought Auburn was a good team all season. I didn't. I don't necessarily think they were frauds or overrated. Uh, the the, the SEC and and we can talk about the the conferences at large if if we want. Um, you know the SEC isn't having necessarily a great tournament, but I don't. I don't. I don't put a ton of stock into conferences in tournament time. I don't think conferences it's such win. a fun narrative though. It is a oh, fun Mine narrative. Oh, stinks. Yeah, but Except Utah State looks really State. good. Yeah, right. I get, you have <laughs> a you San Diego State is fine. Yeah, you have an eight nine game with uh, the Mountain West, which stinks, and the Big Twelve, which is the best conference in college basketball, and uh, Utah yeah. State has their way with TCU. But um, yeah, I uh, I don't know. I, I felt like Auburn was was a good team in the SEC. You, you don't win that many games in the SEC and not be a good team. So I felt like they were good. But the one concern I did have all season was their guard play, uh, which seems to be a, a common thing with Bruce Pearl. Like I, I don't know. Like there, there's a lot of length on his team, a lot of athleticism. Um, you get guys like Jabari Smith that come through the program, and like he's, he's got stars like Janai Broom. Like there are good players, uh, but I never really fully trust his guards, and I didn't. I didn't really trust him all season. Naden Holloway had a had a stinker of a game, and uh, dude gets ejected throwing elbows, and like I, I that's, you know, I I don't want to say that I I saw this coming that they were going to lose to Yale. I mean, they, the way Auburn was playing in the SEC tournament, it did feel like they were they were destined for at least a Sweet Sixteen, but um, for them to go out because Janai Broom is is trying to carry the load and uh, he can't do it all himself. I mean, that part of it is not exactly a surprise to me because that seems to be what Auburn was all season. And the interesting thing about their run to the SEC championship was, uh, I think I pointed this out on part of my take, was like, yeah, I'm not taking anything away from him. I'm not saying that they should give the trophy back, but uh, – they didn't. They they won three games to win the SEC championship, but they didn't have to play Kentucky. They didn't have to play Tennessee. They didn't have to play Alabama. Um, so it did sort of feel like this idea that Auburn was peaking by winning the SEC championship. You're putting too much stock in the trophy they won, and not enough in like let's look at the individual games and the teams that they played. And like you know, is beating South Carolina, Mississippi State, and Florida, is that a run that's worthy of like? really taking this team seriously as a final four threat or is it just like yeah you beat three really good teams but nothing super special i don't know um so yeah it, it was a weird season for auburn this is a weird team i feel like they they very much uh overachieved all year like they i think they were preseason unranked do you know do you remember i can check i'm pretty sure auburn was not um what do we got anything going on cut six it to, point cut game it to six four and a half not st mary's is cut it to six for four and a half um yeah, I'm pretty sure like Auburn, there there wasn't much thought of this Auburn team heading into the season, and and they definitely overachieved. But uh, that's the price of overachieving is you get you get thrown into them. You know, if you would have told told Auburn fans at the start of the year that uh, you are going to to win, how many games did they win? They they ended up winning 27 games. You're gonna go 27 and eight. Yeah, they were unranked preseason. You're gonna win the SEC tournament. Um, you're gonna finish one game back of the the regular season SEC standings, I think they would have been tickled to death about it. But then, you know, once you get here and you lose to Yale, it's a it's a real kick in the dick. So, um, yeah, I think Auburn Auburn was the big moment. But Florida – That was the game of the day. Florida was definitely the game of the day. Florida, Colorado. Yep. Um, Shout out to Walter Clayton. He played his – Do you want to say it? Guts out. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean that that three that deep get the blue button ready, TJ. It kind of gives you vibes of like Marcus Page, like a shot everyone will forget forget about because a better shot came yeah. down the strip at right after it. But that was a great. I mean, they were dead the Gators. Oh, he was carrying them the whole yeah. Like he scored. I read it somewhere, but it's been a long day, and it, all the numbers start to bleed together. He scored like their final sixteen points. He was I want to say incredible. The, the whole he was season, sitting he came bonkers straight shots. from Iona. He was with Coach Patino. Yeah, and he was one of the best players in the league this season. But it's a shame, Gators and Auburn, all both those two finishes happening within like five minutes of each other. It was great theater. Selfishly, killed the bracket. Uh, Auburn in the final four, Florida in the Elite Eight. So that was the dagger. 
in this year's bracket, but in terms of neutral for everyone, that was a, an incredible uh, set yeah. of games there. Dude, 100 and 102 100 was that the final? Both teams? 102 won? 100. The, the deep three tied it at 100 in regulation. That's never awesome. see that in college anymore. Yeah, and it wasn't necessarily two teams. What made it cool is it wasn't like. Uh, it wasn't like the Charleston Bama game where you have two teams that are right kind of playing video game stuff. Like it's, I don't want to say they're gimmicky, but they're kind of yeah. I don't know. Alabama is sort of gimmicky. Like the way Alabama plays basketball is a little bit gimmicky. And these weren't two teams that were were gimmicky. They were just two teams that were hitting everything. Uh, this Colorado team, I'm I'm slowly falling in love with. Um, Lampkin, he's a character. Lampkin is awesome. He rocked the baby. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. He, he was rocking the baby. Uh, Tristan Da Silva is um, just like he's just a knockdown three point shooter at six foot nine. And like I'm I'm looking around at at, uh, at this NBA draft and I'm looking at Tristan Da Silva and I'm like, this guy has to have. I mean, I don't. I don't it, it, the, the draft part of it is all is weird because I don't know who the hell is going in the first round. I we had so many. Guys. I looked at a mock. I had not heard of like the first five guys. Yeah, I we had so many people <laughs> in the, the working at this company who were like who asking are? like. Like Wade Taylor of Texas A&M, they're like, is he a first round pick? I was like, I don't honestly in this draft, I don't even know because <laughs> yeah. like nobody really. You look at like the people that are doing the mock drafts, they don't even really seem to know yeah. who's going to go where. But uh, Tristan Da Silva is awesome. Cody Williams is like a very raw freshman, but uh, you know is highly thought of and might be a lottery pick. Um, I don't know. I KJ Simpson obviously is probably the the second best player in the Pac-12 behind Caleb Love. Um, I'm slowly falling in love with this Colorado team and the way Marquette played against Western Kentucky down at halftime, Jake. That that was looking juicy. They flipped the switch. They won big, but they were down big. Yeah, early. Yeah. Um and Colorado gets Marquette now on uh on on Sunday. So that that's that's suddenly a very interesting game and maybe Colorado is the team that had to play in the play and that is going to go on a little bit of a run. Um the ones and twos and and I I I we talked about this a little bit on the bracket show, Jake, but uh the the bubble or or the the AQ the bubble shrinking because the AQ teams weren't as good yeah. this year all that like the trickle down of all that uh, we we worried that maybe the 16s and 15s weren't going to be as strong um, and I feel like that kind of played itself out this year like I feel like we tried really hard I mean Marquette was down at halftime but yeah I mean Long Beach and South Dakota State both had good first halves. Yeah, they but ended up never, getting blown out, but they they had little runs. But we never really had the like the scare. under eight timeout and yeah. the teams up by three or something. Um, First time it, since 2019, they went undefeated ones and twos. Really? That's crazy. It's 29, yeah, 2021. I won't say what happened. Uh, COVID, COVID happened, and yeah, uh, 2022, was Kentucky, 2023, Princeton, and FDU. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, and it wasn't. Not only did it not happen, there really wasn't anything. You know, the, the Marquette losing at halftime is not it, – it's notable, I guess, but it's not like we actually were like, oh, shit, no. get to the TV. Not like Marquette's going to blow it. Um, so, yeah, uh, what else? Um, the the day started with uh, – okay, so score update. Grand Canyon's up by eight. They're, they're coming out of the under four timeout. Grand Canyon has a ball. This Grand Canyon team, so athletic, so fucking athletic, dude. They they look – they're so, so good. Um yeah, they just look like the better team. Uh, the, especially if you just like line up, especially against St. Mary's, if you just like lined all these dudes up and and try to figure out who would be the better basketball team, give me the give me the team with the guys with the long arms that are jumping out of the gym dunking on everybody. Um, the day started with uh, Northwestern and FAU. Uh, great game goes into overtime. It was twenty to nineteen at halftime, and the over hit. That's crazy. <laughs> I, I didn't even realize that. Yeah. Uh, it was a stinker first half, and then and then they get going in the second half. Um, so I want to talk about the FAU part of it. Northwestern played well. Obviously, Langborg uh, had twenty seven points, and Boo Boo had twenty two. The final possession, the fact that Boo Boo wasn't even considered, and it still worked out, was crazy. Because if Langborg was playing so yeah, well, it was, like, it was the hot hand. Yeah, but if it didn't work out, there'd been so much second guessing. I feel that like. that makes Northwestern so dangerous if Boo Boo has Langborg or uh, Barnheiser yeah. cooking with him. Um, I've got them in the uh, me and Stephen Che and Busters. So oh really? I was asking you before this. Do you think they have any chance to beat UConn? You never know if they play. Like I do. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. I think they have a chance just because if you have guys that can go off, obviously you have a chance. Like I don't, I I think UConn is better, uh, you know. Of course, yeah. Without, the, but March in one game, it's March know. and and Boo Booey and Langborg and Brooks Barnheiser. You have those dudes. Uh, anything can happen. Um, 
I want to talk about the FAU part of it though. Yeah. Uh, you you are a uh, native Floridian, South uh, Florida, f- Boca Raton. Yeah. You fell in love with this FAU last team, last team year. on the run. Yeah. Uh, it's it's pretty much the same team, more or less, that went to the Final Four last year. Um, very disappointing season. Is that fair to say? Very disappointing. We said this as the game was in overtime. They found themselves in an identical spot as last year in a tight eight nine game. Maybe the benefit of a good whistle because Northwestern down the stretch. They were about to close the game out, and that was that weird flagrant that changed the momentum. Dude, the refs down the stretch of this game were, yeah. I mean, I've... I've so uh, many monitor reviews. There's so many bad refs in college basketball, and we've, we've come to be accustomed to seeing bad officiating, and, and still I was shocked at how bad some of these calls were. Uh, they, they were sort of going both ways, though, so I don't know. It was know. bad both ways. Yeah, sure. I don't know... But that flagrant really was benefited, weird. But the flagrant was weird. There were out-of-bounds calls that were weird. They're reviewing everything. Um... Yeah, you're right. It did feel like Florida Atlantic was going to win under controversial circumstances. And then John L. Davis. That last possession of regulation. Woof. I think there was like 4.5 the left when he pulled up from Steph Curry and Jimmer range. And he's just, but he was just like walking the ball up the floor. There was no sense of urgency whatsoever. He was not trying to make anything happen. And I know, like, John L. Davis is their best player, and he's awesome. And yeah. uh, he, I, I think he's going to play in the NBA um, at some point in his life. Uh, Florida Atlantic is is known to do that from time to time, where they're just like John L. Go save us. But so I, I don't really I don't really have a problem with Dusty May saying like just put the ball in John L.'s hands and let him let him make something happen. I was just more confused by like like he did he think there was ten more seconds on the clock than there were because he just I don't know I think there he, was no urgency whatsoever. I honestly think he just may have froze up because like you don't simulate that in practice, right? You can't feel you can simulate the situation or talk about it, but. It's March Madness in a tie game, and every kid dreams about hitting a buzzer beater, and that was probably all that was on yeah. his mind. I mean, he would have been better off just like dribbling into it quickly and just just rising up and yeah. shooting it. But he kind of like walked up the floor, looked up, saw the clock, was like, "Oh shit!" Uh, and then it goes to overtime in Florida Atlantic. What? Uh, yeah, I have it right here. Northwestern scored 19 points in overtime, and they scored 19, 19 points the first in the first half. half. That's crazy. Crazy in five minutes. Yeah, but. Uh, FAU, we said this, big disappointment. I mean, they found themselves in the same spot as last year. And after last year, you would expect them, what were they, preseason, I think, number 10 when we did the Barcelona Invitational to yeah. open the season. Yeah. And then out of the gate, game three, they lose to Bryant at home. They lose to FGCU day before New Year's. And then Charlotte, mm-hmm. Temple last week, that was weird. Yeah, they just limped in. Yeah, and they couldn't overcome. Well, they they it felt like the entire season, with the exception of the, the, the Arizona win, win, the win over Arizona, double, double OT. Overtime. Yeah, um, it did feel like they were just sort of coasting, waiting for the NCAA tournament. Um, but I don't think I don't think college basketball can work that way. I don't think I don't think you can just do that. And I think right. there was a false sense in that locker room of how good they actually were. And that doesn't. I'm not trying to take the Final Four banner down, but as we we've mentioned a million times, like. The ball bounces one different direction against Memphis. Nobody even knows Dusty May's name right now, probably. Right. Like Dusty May became a star. Crazy. I mean, they, I they mean, had, they still they had a thirty win season. You still have to win all year, those but, games yeah. after that, but like thirty five wins. Yeah, but I mean, if 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 FAU loses in the first round, nobody nobody cared about yeah. the season they had. Um and uh yeah, so now it's interesting because I don't you know, Dusty May is obviously a very hot name. Um I'm not really sure how hot he should be. That's really confusing to me too, because mm. uh, I like Dusty May and, and you know, he, he, he seems like a, a coach that's on the rise, but there seems, there's like a sense that he is like the next Brad Stevens. And, a lot of IU people on him. Yeah. But the, but Mike Woodson's coming back next year. And I think right. the, the thought is, is Dusty May is going to bounce from FAU this year. So um, yeah, Louisville is rumored to be going after him. Uh, which uh, Louisville would definitely, if Louisville gets Dusty May, that's definitely an upgrade from Kenny Payne. But um, I don't know. I'm 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 worried that like Dusty May, his reputation built on one Final Four run, which is you know if you're gonna build it on something, a Final Four run's not bad. But uh, I just like this this FAU team having such a disappointing season this year. Uh, it's 
it's hard not to wonder like is like what the hell happened because I do think that like as as you got worried about them all season you're like if they can save it in March if they can save it in March none of this matters it doesn't matter if you're losing to bad teams throughout the season because if March comes around and you go on another run then who cares I guess but um they did not do that and they they just had a very very disappointing season from start to finish I yeah thought, so uh John L Davis Elijah Martin and Vlad Golden are all juniors so like you could do yeah. one more go round. With the main so they're all going to play for Louisville next year with uh, <laughs> with us. That today. that would be intriguing, but uh, yeah, really disappointing for FAU and Northwestern was really impressive down the stretch. And like you said, if anyone not named Boo Booey can show up again, they have a shot. Yeah, uh, I want to talk about DraftKings. The thrill and excitement of March Mania is here, and DraftKings Sportsbook, one of America's top-rated sportsbook apps, is giving new customers a shot to turn five bucks and do one hundred and fifty dollars instantly. In bonus bets with any college basketball bet, North Carolina listeners, don't forget, DraftKings Sportsbook is now live in your state. Uh, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code TITUS. New customers can bet 5 bucks to get $150 instantly in bonus bets. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code TITUS. The crown is yours. Uh, yeah, John L. Davis is going to Louisville. I think Dusty May is going to go to Louisville. And I think, uh, you know, I, I, I'm rooting for Dusty May. I never – we live in a, a, a binary – world of like you either have to love him or hate him or anything else and i you know I, i'm i'm somewhere in the middle on dusty may I, I certainly don't think he's a bad coach but uh it's it the the what ifs of college basketball and the what ifs of, of march madness it's fun to spend a lot of time thinking about those and, and what I, if gordon I, I, hayward shot goes in in 2010 yeah what if Brad stevens probably gets a job on the spot somewhere <laughs> yeah what if uh yeah and the what if with dusty may is like if if they lose last year to to memphis yeah, is he really that much better or worse of a coach? I don't know. But, uh, yeah, it does seem like Dusty May is going to be gone from FAU. And this hopefully FAU can uh, can build some momentum off of these last couple of years. But, yeah, very disappointing year this year. Uh, I, I do think Northwestern has a shot against Connecticut, but Connecticut is absolutely fucking rolling right now. Um, what else from today? What JMU. Else? JMU. Wire to wire. Wire to wire. Destroyed Wisconsin. I mean, Wisconsin looked really bad, but. Wisconsin was – JMU did not feel like an upset. That was my take. Like, from the start, JMU looked like the better team. Um, throughout the entire game, they looked like the better team. Wisconsin was on the back foot the entire game. Uh, they were forcing turnovers like crazy. They were uh, dictating the, the physicality of the game. And for a conference like the Big Ten that wants to pretend like it's very physical, Wisconsin seemed shook by the Sun Belt, by a team from the Sun Belt yeah. uh, punking them – with the physicality. So, uh, yeah, this JMU team is very, very good. Um, I They started the season beating Michigan State in East Lansing. Uh, they just beat Wisconsin in the NCAA tournament. They now have two wins over – they're 2-0 and oh over the Big Ten. Um, yep. I, I I think that JMU – like, I, I, I think they could beat Duke. I do think they could beat Duke. Um, yeah, I mean – Oh, this one's over. Yeah, this yeah, one's over. over. Grand, Grand Canyon. Canyon uh, the Catamounts did all the – did to hang around with Duke, but Duke's size and everything proved to be too big. But JMU, JMU's for real. I think that spread's going to be like six. It's not going to be crazy. What you like, say it was like seven. Yeah. He also said, seven. make sure to say uh, JMU, two Big Ten wins, Michigan, three Big Ten wins. Oh, I would love yeah. to say that. I'll, in fact, I'll say it again. JMU has two Big Ten wins. Jawan Howard had three this year at Michigan. Also, well, I Juwan Howard until the final four. Juwan Howard uh, beat JMU in the number of men he struck in his career, though I think so. There is that. To my knowledge, JMU never struck a man in the face. No one on the JMU basketball team has struck a man in the face in the handshake line. People forget Juwan Howard did that once upon a time. Um, for, we got to talk about Vermont. We have to talk about the Catamounts. You're wearing the sweatshirt. Um, yeah. You did all you could to talk me into them. It's the same thing every year. Yeah. And not not only just them f coming up short, unfortunately, in the tournament games, but the game script is the same every year. They do just enough to hang around, and they'll have those runs, and the opponent will call a timeout. But then, at the end, they miss free throws. The other team's size is a factor, and it just proves to be too much. And obviously, Duke's size and physicality was what put them over the hump and the Catamounts didn't make enough threes. The, the, the Duke whistle, I experienced it firsthand today. They were just doing like little taps and calling it. You're getting frustrated by the Duke I was getting whistle. frustrated, yeah. I'm not blaming it on it. I'm just saying like 
The Duke Group whistle is a real thing. Yeah. Which is <laughs> like, I didn't it's really been, like. It's been a real thing, Jake. I know, but like. <laughs> yeah. Being invested in a team yeah. against Duke, it's usually like not really my thing. I know. But seeing it. How is it not your thing? We got to fix that with you. Because I don't really care enough about like my actual teams. Okay. Like, this is the only team where I have like personal connection. So, like, I was rooting hard for them. Vermont? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. I I I hope you don't take it personally, but uh, yeah, yeah, I just I feel like Vermont. Like the, when they showed the TJ Sorrentine clip, I knew you guys were fucked. They definitely do that every year. Yeah, and the reason they do it every year, yeah. as a reminder for everybody, is because that was the last time Vermont won an NCAA tournament game, and you've made like a thousand tournaments since then. I know. And I don't want to be a Vermont hater. I love the idea of Vermont winning games. It's just. What is it about that program that's so intoxicating? Why is it that when I see Vermont in a bracket, I believe that they're primed to go on a Sweet 16 run? Because of 2005. And that's it? Yeah. Okay. Well, there <laughs> I mean, are, there, there's like a group of teams that are like that. Like if, yeah. if Florida Gulf Coast appeared on a bracket. It's all it takes is one run, and then you see it in the bracket, and you're like, it's going to happen again. Yeah. But that, this is The whole reason I like keep banging the drum about Vermont and the whole reason I write it down before I fill out the bracket is because I know when I get the bracket, I will see Vermont, and I'll be like, oh, my God, yeah. Vermont. Yeah. I, they could pull off the upset, and uh, they never do. Colgate didn't have a chance today. Same with Colgate. Yeah. That is, I you mean, were you were right. I I was dead. Pat on yourself that. on the back. Yeah, I I will. I will literally pat myself because you know your mid major ball. Yeah, I do. Uh, I felt good about Colgate. I felt good about Vermont. Um, JMU Wisconsin. I knew would be a good game. I think I ended up picking Wisconsin for the content because I thought uh, PFT being sad and then Dan being sad for losing to Duke would be the best outcome. It was not. I think Dan moping the entire night was fantastic. As we're getting clips from PFT. Uh, in the in the arena, just in tuxedo and a tuxedo screaming, yelling at fans behind him and telling them to STFU. Like it was it was interesting, and now it sets up JMU Dukes versus Duke. Yes, it does. Sunday. It sets that up the Duke and the Dukes. Uh, and Duke, we still have Duquesne, Jake. That's yes. that's a lot of Duke going around. Yep. Um, what what other? Uh, let me see what other games we we, do we, should, first? we should talk about. Yeah, let's talk about visible before we do that. Uh, draining a half court buzzer beater to win the game not easy. Switching to visible and saving on wireless with no hidden fees. Yeah, that's pretty easy. Switch to visible, the wireless company with nothing to hide, and get one line wireless with unlimited 5G data powered by Verizon, just twenty five dollars a month every month, taxes and fees included. One line wireless, just twenty five dollars a month, taxes and fees are included. No hidden fees, no gotchas. Visible is the visible is the wireless company with nothing to hide. Unlimited five G data powered by Verizon. Bench wireless with hidden fees and switch to visible. Switch now at visible.com. Rate with the service. Rate with service on on the visible plan for additional terms and network management practices. See visible.com. Uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, one seeds we already kind of talked about. I wanna I wanna shout out Purdue for not losing to a sixteen seed this year. Big, Rambling at the under four big, the first uh, half they were they were in there. They hung around for a little while. Um, I never actually seriously thought Grambling was going to no. win this game at any point. Uh, but The first few possessions, I know our guys in the cave did the race to 10 for Grambling. I, I don't realized, know why. I think Whitney, it was his first time seeing Zach Eady play. Yeah, watching Ryan Whitney, funny to see. Watching like, Ryan Whitney discover Zach Eady was, was a sight to behold. Um, I love that. Why, yeah. TJ, maybe you could shed some light on this. Why uh, in the Gambling Cave – why does when like everyone comes together for a bet? Why do they pick the dumbest fucking bets <laughs> ever? Is it's there, entertaining. Like race, race to tens, electric. Talking about race to tens. I'm yeah. talking about a race to so, ten yeah. when Grambling State is playing Purdue, and they're like, "Let's throw money. All let's all come together and throw money on Grambling yeah. State getting to ten before Purdue." I'm fine with the race to ten. A race to ten is fun to bet on. I'm because not, like it's such a small sample size that makes you believe that it can happen. Yeah, you're, and also like. What if, what if, what if it happens? And then we thought about betting it, but we didn't bet it. Yeah, like yesterday, uh, didn't uh, who made their first three threes and then just died afterwards? Akron, um, yeah. who was not Colorado. Grand Rapids State playing against seven four nothing? Zach Eady and Purdue. Colorado State, I think. I don't know who it was, but yeah, race to tens are fun. Um, Again, the race to 10, not the issue. The yeah, issue, Purdue. Grambling State was playing Purdue. And Dave was like, I I'm in a massive hole. Here's how I'm going to get out of that hole. We as a we as a collective are going to bet on Grambling State to beat Purdue to 10. Um, yeah, big win for for Purdue. Obviously, they, they turned it on the second half. Uh, Houston, though, 
that was free money if you're someone betting on 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 college basketball um i mean houston absolutely strangled longwood which i i i expected like houston is so good at playing teams that are shitty and just like sucking the life out of what they're trying to do and that was that first half was a clinic from Houston, and I know they're playing a 16 seed. I'm I, I'm I'm applying all the context to this, but Houston looked really really good today. Uh, what else? What else? Uh, I'll yeah. tell you a team that looked really really disappointing. Go ahead, the Lobos. Yeah, uh, everyone loves talk about the that. Lobos, and they just got destroyed. Yeah, New Mexico. They were the, New Mexico they were favored. Was the, New Mexico was the tipping point for the Mountain West discourse when yeah. New Mexico was getting run out of the gym by Clemson. Um, who. To be fair, we played great. Like Clemson has been up and down all season. Clemson was hot to start the year and and you know didn't didn't really close the year all that great. Um, but they showed up and they beat the hell out of New Mexico. Like that game was over from the start almost. Um, yeah, and everyone loved UNM. Chase Hunter at twenty one. He was awesome. Uh, Joe Girard, former Syracuse guy. Former Syracuse guy. Joe Eight Girard. Threes, missed some. That's the Joe Girard experience. Uh, San Diego State had a big one too uh, over UAB. I think yeah. uh, Jaden Ladee basically saved the game for him. Um, I'm not really sure what to make of the San Diego State team still, uh, but I said that last year too. It's really hard because San Diego State, I do like them, but then I wonder how much I'm just paying attention to their jerseys and they just seem like a cool program and they, they've won a lot of games. And they, they are – I will say this about San Diego State. They have reached the point where they're the only Mountain West team that people are going to trust moving forward. Right. Um, I know Utah State beat the hell out of TCU, but, like, San mm-hmm. Diego State uh, gritted out a big win. But, like, they – Jaden Ledee had to had to be a hero down the stretch. And I didn't really think this UAB team was all that great. Uh, and for, for San Diego State to be tested there. But now the brackets kind of opened a little bit for them. You have a Yale team uh, that, that, that just beat Auburn. Get a championship rematch in the Sweet 16, most likely. Right. No such thing as, as free wins, but Yale is obviously an attractive second-round matchup. And then, yeah, you get you get to take another shot at UConn, and we'll see how that goes. Um, I think San Diego State has gotten worse from last year, and there's an argument to be made that UConn has gotten better, so I don't know if it's going to go super well for them. But, uh, you know, we can cross that bridge when we come to it if you're if you're San Diego State. Yeah, Clemson looked great. Colorado I'm falling in love with. Uh, Texas A&M. I, that, that's hey, that's yeah. a game I wanted to talk there about. There were a lot of blowouts today. <laughs> a lot of blowouts yeah. today. Um, it was not – there wasn't as much madness as we would have liked, but we did have the last second shot from uh, Colorado. From Colorado, and, and we had overtime, and we had uh, – The Auburn one, at least At least one big upset. I think this Houston A&M game – now, they already played this year. Wade Taylor, if I remember right, had 34. It was a really, really good game. Um, that's going to – that is – going to be a war on Sunday that's going to be absolutely incredible to watch uh the guard matchup between Houston and Texas A&M um like I said Houston got the win earlier in the season but it wasn't exactly a convincing win where you walk away saying they're definitively the better team and uh we expect Houston to roll again um yeah that that's a that's a, a terrifying matchup if you're Houston same thing I mean all, really all of them like uh Utah State all of the one seeds in the second round are very susceptible now that I look at it, which is not to say that I, I expect any of them to lose. Uh, but well, What percentage have, would you say that an 8-9 uh, beats a 1 this weekend? Um, Just one of them. Because I feel like one we, of the we four. Can, you can talk us into – Okay, I would say – Not who, just like – I I would odds, say one North, happens. Northwestern has like a twenty, yeah, fifteen to twenty percent chance. A and M I would say has like a thirty thirty five yeah ish percent chance. Utah State like twenty to maybe 25. forty. Utah State probably yeah about that, and then Michigan, Michigan State, State like, like 40. forty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're aligned on this. Yeah, we are. Uh, I think one. I I'd be surprised if chalk happened. Yeah, I would too. Like if you could bet on the DraftKings, what are the odds? That one happens, I would say it's like close to a pick'em, or is that too generous? Um, uh, I don't know. I'm I'm a big dumb idiot. That's too much math. But yeah, I I feel like overall, I'd say it's like would, it's 40, 50. 40, yeah, exactly. That one of them happens. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I, I I the matchups are crazy, and, mm-hmm. and Northwestern, if uh, like, like the eight nine seem very much stronger than usual. Like I feel like 
usually you couldn't confidently say that a one will lose. Yeah, right well, I think now. the I think the ones are just not as good too as yeah. we're used to seeing. And um, all these teams had great seasons, but you know we've seen we just saw Houston lose by twenty five to, mm-hmm. to Iowa State. We just we Connecticut got blown out at, at you know at Seton Hall earlier in the year. Like it's not like these teams. Purdue lost to Nebraska by a thousand, and Nebraska is an eight seed. So the idea of Purdue like not losing to an eight seed. Um, of course, Purdue is susceptible to that. North Carolina, I, f- I feel like, is the weakest one seed. And Michigan State, um, you know, it's his, own it's, it's his own march. And they have a ton of talent. And they went to the Sweet 16 last year. They're sort of in a similar spot when they beat Marquette last year. So, yeah, I, I, I think the ones are – I would love to see one of the ones go down. I just don't know who I um, who I expect the most. But, yeah, it, it's terrifying matchups because you have Texas A&M with Wade Taylor and you have Northwestern with Boo Boo and Langborg and Barnheiser. Michigan State with Tyson Walker and Utah State with Osabor. Uh you're going up against like individual players. It's not just that these are good teams. It's not like you're playing against a team that just runs like a fun, good system and is, you know, running some goofy ass Princeton offense are on you or something. That you're you're going up against teams that have individual dudes that can just take over games. And that would that would scare me if I was the one seeds because that's how this event works, is just dudes get hot and you just kinda I mean, that's what happened in Kentucky. Dudes get hot, and you just kind of sit there, and you're like, fuck. We can't right. do anything to stop this guy. Um, all right. Alabama know. looked good. That was it, too. Alabama did look good. a classic Alabama tournament win. Yeah, and, and it was not a surprise at all to me. That was that was anybody who uh, asked me for a pick today in the gambling cave, and, and any time Alabama-Charleston got brought up, I was like, those, those two teams play the exact same style. Alabama just has better players, and they're more athletic. And, like, that, that one was kind of obvious, so that – I, I have Alabama in my lead eight. I do think Alabama is good, and I think um, their pace and, and the way they play can uh, you know catch teams off guard. And um, I do exp- I, I do think they're good, but I think tonight is kind of I don't know if it really tells me much because Charleston basically was punching above their weight class, and Bama yeah. was like, we're, we're more than happy to run with you. So um, anything else, Jake? Uh, we I'm got just, a wedgie. We got a. Yeah, we're we trying three to three total now. You're trying to. Uh, coin a new thing the ne- the netty is that yeah. what you're calling it we can go with netty yeah is that was still, weird. did it happen today as much no it was just that one site i guess the nets were tight i don't know why do you think they're gonna be tight tomorrow probably not because there's a lot more shooter rounds that happened yeah that's true they just put new nets on the rims and then the balls were getting stuck that was probably it like yeah. you know when you go to like a sporting goods store and they like cover it yeah it's probably like something like that it's just the net hasn't gotten any work in. Yeah, I don't like that. You should be able to when you when you swish a shot, the net it should, should snap. go through. Well, yeah, yeah. It should also <laughs> it should go kind through. Kind of defeats the purpose of. <laughs> we might as well just have peach baskets at that. Yeah, point if we're not gonna. Um, the but yeah, not gonna go looking through. at looking at the games today, is there a favorite? Gonzaga, Kansas, Michigan State, UNC, probably. Uh, the the, the game that I'm most excited yeah. about. Um. Yeah, I think it. I think it's Michigan State, North Carolina. I think Dayton, Arizona is going to be a lot of fun. Weird that um, they put Salt Lake City's games as this early standalone slot. It's going to be like ten forty-five a.m. Eastern local or nine forty-five a.m. Eastern. Whoa! I, local, I, I just oh. now noticed that. Yeah. Why are they doing that? I don't know. It's really surprising. Fanta tweeted that last night. He was like, "Wait a minute." This is weird. Like, it's always an East Coast location going first for those standalone second yeah. round games. Salt but, Lake City breakfast games. Yeah. That's really weird. I don't like that at all. Um, that's, a, that's if you're a gambler. What does that mean? Under. Early, Under. Early okay. wake up. Yeah. I'm but. really good at like. Uh, I'm not. I'm. I'm good at uh, noticing things with uh, college basketball. I'm not good at coming to the conclusions though. Like I'm. <laughs> I'm good at like. Whoa. That's a. Or you point out. That I, is a thing. I, I notice that things are in altitude, and I notice. Right. And I'm like, oh my god! But then I just don't know what to do with that information. And right. I don't know. It's a double up. It's altitude and it's early. Yeah. I noticed that. Oh my god! You have uh, that. That was a big thing this year. I. I someone. Someone showed me a spreadsheet they made about the balls and like when yes. teams that don't play with the. Oh yeah. And I passed it along to Dan and he's like, "Yeah, this is old news. Like, fuck this." It this was like actually. last year. That's yeah. Last year. Because two years ago yes. they debuted the ball and they were bouncing off the back. Yeah, dude, it was terrible. Yeah. yeah. I remember watching uh, Loyola and Ohio State in twenty twenty one. Yeah, twenty one. Seven ten game, right? Um, no, twenty. It was twenty two. Twenty two. Yeah. Yeah, twenty one. We oh, yeah, played only one. We yeah, played yeah, only yeah. one game there in yeah, twenty one, yeah. Jake. Um, yes, yeah. You did. 
Yeah. Uh, and 22, and then they couldn't, like, dudes couldn't even dribble the ball. They're yeah. just, like, trying to bring the ball up, and it's, like, <laughs> bouncing above their head. They can't even make chess passes. And then everyone got obsessed with tracking the basketball. But now that's not a thing anymore because now, like, everyone's on it, so it's not, I don't know, too much. Uh, to answer your question, I think Michigan – I, I really feel like the first three games you think I'm Dayton most excited about. Um, all of them, obviously, you're excited about, but I honestly think my number one, number two, and number three – I think Dayton, Arizona, especially if it's an early tip-off, uh, I think that's going to be a great game. I think that is going to be a fantastic game. Um, Dayton is – is the, the, you just have two teams' offenses that are so, so good that uh, I don't know. But if, if you're telling me it's early, maybe we we don't lean into that line of thinking. Maybe it's not that, that the offenses are going to be good. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I'm fired up for that because I, I think it's going to be fun. I don't know how close it will be, but Dayton is a uh, very fun team, and Deron Holmes is awesome, and uh, I want to see Dukes cry again. So <laughs> what is Dukes going to do if they win? I think he's doing win? a solo stream tomorrow morning. Is he just going to, like, cut his head off if they win? Like, what else? Like, once you cry when you when you beat a Mountain West team in the first round, well, I think what, it was where, just is like, else, where else do I'll you go I'll defend Dukes. There? I think it was just, like, the way it happened and, like, what – he got robbed of in 2020. Like, they were dead. What did he get robbed of in 2020? A one seed for Dayton? Yeah. A legit chance to win it all. That'll yeah. never happen again. For but them. that was, I mean, that was four years ago, Dukes. Yeah, but they haven't made the tournament since then. Yeah. All right. I guess I'm the asshole. <laughs> <laughs> why is everybody... No, you're not. Because it a does lot of people like are it. like, why are you crying? Yeah. I'm just not. Well, everyone else, everyone on the mostly sports couch was like, "I did Finn Dukes. I think he's." Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm online, and everyone's like, "Why is this guy crying?" I was like, "Yeah, yeah why is he crying?" It makes sense then, that Ebo would because Ebo roots for James Madison. I root for Rutgers. Like where yeah. we, we root for schools that don't get a lot of opportunities exactly. to be happy about our fandom. Yeah, but but Dayton does. Like that's what the the whole like the whole thing was like. We haven't won in nine years. Nine years is nothing. Nine years. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's just like you're too young or something. But Dude, like nine. Yeah. He was also probably enjoying himself some. Beverages. Yeah, but that's the point. Is like yeah. Like you're obviously. I don't know. Whatever. I'm. I don't want. It's the first time he, as a fan, he's won a March Madness game. But I'm genuinely yeah. worried about what happens if he beats Arizona. I think he I think to, he's yeah. he's gonna cut his head off. Grow up. He's or... just gonna just. just, just explode, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's just gonna start <laughs> shaking and then just <laughs> explode everywhere. Um, yeah. Gonzaga Kansas is going to be a good bad game. I think I I uh, I think Kansas is. Um, I think Gonzaga rolls. Uh, yeah, well, that's what I'm worried about. Is I think Kansas has been counted out a little too much. Um, yeah, that yeah, and you know, not good at making picks. So yeah, and and Michigan State Carolina is uh, is always a is, is always a fun matchup. So I'm fired up about that one as well. Um, I, I'm not even going to pretend to make any picks about any of these, but I will say, Jake, my bracket. Not doing so shabby. Nice. Yours, you, you don't feel good about yours. I mean, the Auburn Florida swing killed me because Auburn Final Four Gators Elite Eight that happened within ten minutes was tough. I needed to split those, so I have one Final Four gone. Oh have... no! Oh no, TJ, what are we looking at here? That's all of our brackets right here on the right. Oh no! Yeah, but and you're below Brandon Walker and my dog, Jake. Yeah, it's been bad. Oh. You sound like the guys online. <laughs> <laughs> they expect perfection. Well, you were so you were so consumed with like making sure your national title pick didn't, I didn't lose in the first round. You but forgot that's the to, thing. I could forgot still, to pick all the other games right. I, I could still have a respectable bracket. You could salvage it. Yeah, yeah. Still have left. You still have uh, you still have your championship left, right? And you're fi you have three final. Yeah, points, points remaining. Wait, oh, look at that. I have the most, one of the most points remaining. Kind yeah. Of. <laughs> you have more points remaining. No, it's it was bad, but it can get better. But it's not going to win. You know what we need to do next year? We need to remind ourselves: um, pay attention to the first few games, and like really focus on those with the picks. Because I do think first impressions matter with the bracket. Like when you're talking about the guys online and they're chirping at you. I think if you hit your first like six games, yeah, you know, yeah. 
then you just set a precedent. Like Bijan Robinson might get yeah, every, he did a perfect day one. If he if he gets every pick wrong from here, no one's gonna notice or care. We're just gonna remember the time that Bijan Robinson had a perfect was, day one. Dude, he had he was almost, killing it. And Western Kentucky was like in it too. Yeah, if he, he had Western yeah. Kentucky. He had, yeah, he had yeah, Western that's Kentucky. What broke him. If yeah. he had Western Kentucky, it was on. Like the whole country would have been behind Bijan yeah. Robinson. That was crazy. Um, zero perfect brackets left. Zero in, in the world. There's always zero after round one. I feel like. There's got to be. That doesn't even seem like it's that hard. Like, when you're filling it out, it really doesn't even feel like it's that hard. And then, not that I expect to get a perfect round one, but it's like, I bet feel you feel like somebody out there would get perfect round one. I bet one. you if Kentucky won, there would be perfect brackets yeah. right now. Hmm. Yeah, maybe. I mean, there's, definitely there's, took Yale. there's probably plenty that just missed one. Yeah. But yeah, people took Yale. Maybe, yeah, maybe that's it. And maybe not a lot of people took Kentucky. But yeah, that was probably the one that. That ruined everybody the most. Um, yeah, I, I I think so far this tournament's been awesome in terms of like it, it's it's setting up for for some great games and uh, you know we we talk about this last year I certainly talk about it every year Jake like I enjoy the upsets but I I still want I still want to look up in the Sweet Sixteen mm-hmm. and the Elite Eight and have like banger matchups where it just feels so far, like two still colossal teams coming together. I'll tell you what though, if Colorado beats Marquette, the bottom half of the South is. Wide open. <laughs> Colorado beats Marquette, yeah. NC State, Oakland, and Colorado. But this Colorado team, like, I know they're a 10 seed, but they're not – they're very good. They have a ton of talent on that team, and they have, they have dudes. Um, I I don't think, like, if – yeah, it, obviously having a 10 seed go to the lead, at that point it's a 10, a 14, or a, an 11. But uh, same with NC State, really. Same with Oakland. I don't know. I don't know. I, I do feel like all these teams are very, very good. Oakland, obviously, is a little more of a – that's a gonna Cinderella, be an game. A Cinderella deal. I don't know how often uh, you're gonna have a dude hit ten threes in a game, um, but yeah, NC State. I think everybody expected them to lose to Texas Tech, or maybe, mm-hmm. maybe, or at least like you're gonna run out of steam at some point. But they don't. They don't seem interested in in doing that, Jake. So the buzzer beater to force OT in the ACC semifinals against Virginia. Yeah. Well, be circling that back. Like that doesn't yeah, happen. It's, it's, they go to overtime. They don't even play UNC in the championship. Yeah. And here they are, and round if, 32. if Virginia wins that game, favored to go to the Sweet 16. If Virginia wins that game, they get a better seed, and we don't all have to watch them in during the time. first four in prime time. Yeah, Dang. It's domino another, effect. It's another what if. Uh, all right, thanks, Jake. Uh, we'll I'll be back tomorrow. Um, we're, we're we're live streaming tomorrow too, right? TJ is, is the we're doing like gambling and stuff tomorrow as well. Yeah. Um, we're gonna we're gonna run all that back tomorrow. We'll, I'll do a live show uh, after all the action tomorrow. A lot of fun games. We're excited. More March Madness to come tomorrow. Good night, everybody.